This is it. This is the end. Was all of this worth it? Did we actually improve your system's performance? Are you going to see meaningful gains on your gaming performance? We're going to dive into the benchmarks, and then I want you to come back for some analysis and conversation about how to use all of this information to maybe save you a little bit of time and squeeze just a little bit more out of your system. I am the Graying Tech, a gaming insider, and if you would like to learn how to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that subscribe button. So those are the benchmarks, but I wanted to pull out one more. This is Far Cry 5. I think they provide a good bit of information. And what I want you to focus here on is the frame rate of each of the individual scores here. Now you see stock, PBO, PBO plus curve optimizer, curve optimizer, PBO plus, auto OC 100. That's what all that information is. And this is the 4K variety. Now you'll note that from stock all the way to the things that we messed around with the most, there's not a huge amount of difference. The numbers go slightly higher, but really not outside of the realm of potential error or anything else that I might have done. When we look at the 1440p though, again, the same areas, we actually see PBO, Curve Optimizer, and AC100, the Auto Overclocking 100, has a, a significantly enough better score than what stock was able to deliver. And this to me is the conundrum with this AC100. In a lot of instances, it doesn't give you the same amount of performance as PBO plus the curve optimizer. I don't know if auto overclocking right now is bugged. I don't know if I'm not using the calculations and the tools right. Everything that I have seen, it is right. So there seems to be a conflict between regular precision boost with curve optimizer and trying to use this auto OC tool. And my hypothesis goes back to the fact that it is trying everything it can to try to get you those numbers, including more volts and more current to try to hit those high peaks that could be causing higher temperatures and that could be actually slowing the system down at certain times when it could be maintaining a more stable boost. And then other times the games actually might be taking advantage of those higher frequencies, even if they are not fully taxing the CPU itself. So when it comes to these bottom two, that's why I'm a little bit stuck on the overall recommendation. From the benchmarks themselves, you can see curve optimizer and taking some time to dial in the PBO settings 
those two are going to have the most impact, it would seem, with your Ryzen CPU, especially the Ryzen 5000 like we tested here. In my experience, Auto OC did give some level of benefit, particularly when it came to some games. Hitman 2 and Far Cry 5 obviously played out the best when it came to those statistics, but with Borderlands 3, the numbers actually went down, which is interesting because that is a purely AMD optimized title. So it would seem that you are able to use your CPU to squeeze just a little bit more, and Auto OC might give you just a tiny sliver more. And I even compared CSGO, a title that is very old and players like to play at the highest possible frame rates possible. And in my experience, even with stock, I was getting well over 500 into the 600 frame per second category, well above the 360 hertz monitors that are out there and available. In fact, the only thing that seemed to draw this score down was when I had fog effects enabled. So if you threw a grenade, for example, and that's something that can easily be turned off. So the CPUs today seem to have finally caught up to the point where older games that were really single core or few core optimized, the speeds are just caught up now to what those older systems actually were able to give them. So there's no appreciable benefit, I would say, from a gaming standpoint in improving your overall CPU performance. In the next series, we are specifically talking about RAM. But in order to get there, we have to take a small little detour. You see, this motherboard and many of the advanced motherboards that are out there offer you the ability to adjust the power characteristics that are fed throughout the entire motherboard. And it is those characteristics that have helped Project Red Star already give you insights to very impressive gains. So I'm going to share the information I have found and the numbers that I have used to get this motherboard dialed in exactly the way I need it to be. And when that video posts, you can check it out right there.